OCR Street Ministry. Let's talk about forgiveness and how much of our confusion and misery in life is due to our underestimating or ignoring the enemy of our souls. Some of us rarely think of Satan and his demons and if we do, we often downplay their powers and influence. Surely we can overestimate Satan like many of us do, but in our day, especially in the West, it seems like he gets less attention and resistance than he deserves. And while the devil was already defeated and his end is for sure, he is still the ruler of this world. He still leads the cosmic powers over this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. He rules and corrupts through deception. There is no truth in him. Jesus warns when he lies, he speaks out of his own native language, his own character, for he is a liar, the father of lies. So the apostle Paul warns us we must be careful lest we be outwitted by Satan or be found ignorant of any one of his devices, any one of his designs. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse 11. What may surprise us is what in particular prevents us from being outwitted by Satan. Paul writes, what I've forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ so that we would not be outwitted by Satan. If we are not ignorant of his devices. Do you want to know what Satan's devices are? Do you even know what Satan's devices are? His schemes? He wants you to hold a grudge. He wants you to believe that vengeance is yours and not God's. Forgiveness outweighs Satan and forgiveness subverts his wickedness. So why is forgiveness so hard in our lifetime? Why is forgiveness so hard in our actions? Forgiveness may be the hardest thing for many of us to do in our own lifetimes. I say may because many suffer and wrestle in horrible ways. But even then, how much of our suffering is owing to someone else's sins or failures? Because none of us is without sin. Forgiveness is simply a given if we want to love and be loved in this life. God disarms Satan and all of his armies with costly forgiveness. Your forgiveness. Forgiveness can be hard because it fights against all of the impulses of our flesh. Did you see how he hurt me? Why would I make myself vulnerable again? The pain still feels fresh and deep. How could I possibly pretend to be okay with him or her? This is the dozenth time he has done this to me. Haven't I forgiven him enough? I'll never be able to trust him or her again. How could I possibly forgive him or her? What voices keep you from giving? What voices in this life keep you from forgiving someone? And because forgiveness can be so hard, God gives us great reasons to forgive. We forgive because he first forgave us. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4:32. We forgive because God crushed his son for our forgiveness. He canceled the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. And though that forgiveness and through that for that cross, we should not be surprised. The Bible says he disarmed the rulers and authorities and pit them to open shame by the triumphing over them in him. God disarmed Satan and all of his armies with costly forgiveness, your forgiveness, my forgiveness, knowing who Satan was and what he wants and how he works. God chose to fight instead with a broken body, spilled blood. God chose to forgive. And so we too forgive so that he would not be outwitted by Satan. So we are not ignorant of his devices. But forgiveness is, what is forgiveness? Do you look at forgiveness as hostility? Satan loathed forgiveness. Forgiveness offends everything he stands for and fights against. He relatively accuses 
morning, afternoon, evening, and night, hurling our sins like stones against us. Accuser is he. The accuser of who he is, is who he is. Therefore, forgiveness is his sworn enemy. Forgiveness contradicts his existence. Forgiveness defies his work, life work. To him, forgiveness is hostility. For Christians, though, forgiveness is an act of peacemaking, purchased and made possible by the cross. Paul writes, he himself is our presence, his peace, our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of two so making peace and might reconciliate us both to God and one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility hostility died on cross calvary the hill and peace grew in this place you see paul was speaking specifically about the hostility between jews and gentiles the fiercest and longest standing hostility of his day but his peace is for all who claim the cross forgiveness is hostility to satan because he greeds and breeds hostility and despises peace therefore if the cross tormented him a nightmare worse than anything in his wicked imagination and every act of forgiveness since then every time we defy our flesh and forgive one another in jesus name is another tormentor of that glorious trauma that satan faces that means we withhold forgiveness is to play into satan's hands it's important for you to understand this right now jesus warns us if we are you hearing me if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses do you hear the suicide and forgivelessness if we are too proud or bitter to hold out the hands of forgiveness god will withdraw his he will withdraw his if we for refuse to forgive he will hold our own every sin against us until we can pay for them all and we will never pay for them all we cannot pay for them all to withhold forgiveness is not only to join satan in his wickedness but it is to be left with satan and his wickedness miserable unforgiven cast into outer darkness and you see jesus calls us to forgive not just once but tirelessly pay attention to yourselves he warns if your brother sins rebuke him and if he repents forgive him and if he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times saying i repent you must forgive him in the previous verses he threatens awful judgment for any who refuse the bible says it would be better for him if a milestone hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea withholding forgiveness even after having already forgiven someone six times in a day is a wicked offense to god so the wise flee judgment and run to forgive do you comfort your offender you see when paul calls the church in corinth to forgive he is likely calling them to forgive a false teacher who rose up to oppose him this is personal and likely painful for him turn to forgive and comfort him he says or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow can you see satan wrenching 
not only does Paul forgive his offender, but he campaigns for forgiveness and even beyond forgiveness. He comfort. He's for comfort and love. I beg you to reaffirm your love for him. 2 Corinthians 2.8 A previous letter of his had evidently led the rebellion to repentance. 2 Corinthians 7.9 But some of the people still felt betrayed and ready to punish their leaders. 2 Corinthians 2.6 The apostle, however, saw that Satan wanted something. With every reason to harbor resentment and hold a grudge, he denied himself, picked up his cross, and forgave. While Satan iced the waters with bitterness and division, Paul warmed them with surprising, compassionate, forgiving love. He could comfort those who had hurt him because he had been comforted again and again, but by the Father, of mercies and God of all comfort, 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4. Have you experienced that comfort? Have you been willing to extend it to all those who have hurt you? Ask yourself this question right now. Ask yourself, what are you willing to do? Maybe the most effective way to wage spiritual warfare today would be by us be more quickly to freely forgive remember one the flesh has a sinful bent towards self interest and we wrestle not against flesh and blood in closing this is just one more example which provides evidence of the truth provides evidence in every detail in the words I am speaking here today which was purposely placed in the order that I am speaking them for you to be here at this very moment this is happening so that those with eyes to see and ears to hear and the heart to understand would see and know the truth of what I am saying right now. You will not have excuse when you stand before the judgment seat of the Most High God. That is the creator of the heavens and all earth. He'll step forward in all of his glory and ask you to give an account as to why you chose to be a part of the great hypocrisy. The falling away and the willingly worship the things that are not of him. The sin. The abominations. And everything that stood against his word and his will at that moment, you will not be able to say you did not know. If you have not given your life to the most high God, the God of the Bible, the creator of the heavens and all earth, by accepting the blood sacrifice of the lamb, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ that was shed in the blood, shed on the cross for the redemption of all of our sins. The time to do so is now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment. This is the time. This is the moment in time for you to understand, for you to come to the understanding that God is calling you now. God is calling us to his will and his way. This is the day. This is the time. This is the call for repentance. Who is willing to step forward?